As you can see, it's April 15th, 2011, and we are in the middle of a snowstorm. Uh, we've been dealing with, with water, the, water issues the past uh, couple of weeks, and now the snow is adding on to the issues. Well, we've had difficult years before, that's for certain. But this one was different in two respects. Uh, the first is the duration. The other is the breadth. It's been going on over a large portion of our railroad uh, for a long, long time. If you start with the snow, uh, mudslides, rock slides in the north, the snow melt, the rainfall, all the contributing factors towards water flow and where we've seen water get out of the riverbanks and up onto the railroad and have impact on our operation, the number of places is staggering. BNSF and the Corps of Engineers kept in constant contact as the winter snowpack melted and spring rains put pressure on our nation's waterways. Spring flooding in Montana, North Dakota, and all the way down the Mississippi River had an impact on operations across the BNSF system. But as summer approached, the Corps of Engineers warned of a more devastating situation on the Missouri River. We knew from the, uh, the Corps of Engineer forecast that the, uh, the runoff, especially on the Missouri, upper Missouri River Basin, was going to be uh, substantial. That was tied primarily to the uh, runoff from the, the snow melt, was the prediction. And then in late May, about a year's worth of rain fell in a two-week period over the uh, Missouri River Basin. And we knew that the river was going to rise. We had hydrology experts telling us that there was a good chance that the levees would be overtopped and it would take out our main track for for quite some period of time, uh, on the order of weeks. Uh, we knew that we would not be able to sustain that and we were going to try to stay ahead of that water. So uh, yesterday, uh, actually on Monday, uh, June 6th, we started mustering forces, both manpower and equipment from a four state area, bringing them to this location with a plan being put in place that started Monday to start building levees on both sides of our main track for approximately four miles to keep the crust and sub open. Uh, last night we decided to help augment that process by bringing in ballast trains so that we have a two-phase uh, process. Not only will we build levees, but we'll also start raising our railroad approximately four feet for about three miles. The Creston Sub is a main east-west artery that BNSF operates from Chicago to Denver and Chicago to the coal fields. The Corps of Engineers forecasted that if the water topped the levee, it could be at that level for at least two months, and it could be even much longer than that. A lot of the locals uh, that we've talked to here over the last week uh, think that the water, if it goes over the levee, could be up for three, four, maybe even five months. If that were to occur, obviously that would be a huge impact to moving coal to the mid Midwest and further east, uh, as well as all the other traffic that we run. On June 13th, levee breaks took the Napier and eventually the St. Joseph subdivision out of service, which made the efforts on the Creston sub all the more important. In terms of disaster plans and preemptive efforts, one of the largest projects that I've ever seen is what we did at the Pacific Junction location where we cross with our main line between the coal fields and Chicago we were across the Missouri River, and it worked. If we hadn't done that, our railroad certainly would have been on service, and it never has. With water taking out many parts of the BNSF system, multiple plans to counteract service interruptions went into effect for every operations group. When you think about our, our system, when uh, uh, specifically when we lost uh, Minot, due to uh, flooding and then the St. Joseph subdivision between uh, Lincoln and Kansas City. We had the equivalent of about uh, uh, 80 trains that we had to reroute. Uh, obviously, we don't have 80 trains worth of capacity elsewhere on our system to absorb that impact. So the uh, rerouting that number of trains across our system has a collateral impact on, on all traffic types. Without people, the BNSF network pretty much comes to a halt. And when you're trying to run a larger number of trains in some corridor or on some, some segment of the railroad, you've got to have locomotive engineers and conductors to put on the trains and to operate them from one end of that segment to the other. The reroute plans also took trains hundreds of miles out of their normal route, decreasing locomotive velocity, resulting in a need for more locomotives and cars to haul the same amount of freight. The mechanical teams quickly moved locomotives and rail cars out of storage and back into service. 
For engineering, a shift in the capital maintenance plan moved resources and people to projects on subdivisions closed due to flooding. BNSF has increased its capital plan this year in part to restore our network after the floods. While the floods caused damage on many parts of the system, the St. Joseph subdivision may well have been the most challenging. Levee breaks near Rulo, Nebraska allowed Missouri River floodwaters to overtake a portion of the St. Joseph subdivision. Here along the Missouri River, BNSF was out of service for more than two months, the longest outage on a major route during this year's flooding. To repair the damage and strengthen the infrastructure to prevent flooding in the future, BNSF raised and restored track and roadbed and built and rebuilt bridges. This included adding five new bridges needed to handle water volumes and restore the track to service. When all these bridges are done, the new capacity that's uh, created by these bridge openings will alleviate the, the floodwaters or get the floodwaters from the Big Lake area that are currently uh, north of our tracks. So it will allow those to pass through our tracks. Additionally, BNSF has moved up some capital maintenance plans to take advantage of the lengthy outage on the St. Joseph subdivision. We have had to uh, react to circumstances and in some cases, uh, well, in many cases, adjust our capital plan to uh, account for what's going on around the railroad. We've had to uh, shut down certain projects, move a lot of other projects around, and basically be, be very, very flexible. Uh, and I think we've been good at that this year. The team has done a remarkable job in terms of being flexible and able to overcome some of the challenges. We've had to move a lot of people around, uh, so they've had to be flexible. Uh, and it's worked. It's worked very well. These floods have had uh, you know, a devastating impact on our service and our velocity across our network. Uh, our, our challenge going forward, our, our customers understand that, uh, that impact, but I, I can also say that we have many customers who are struggling with the duration of this impact, and, and they're telling us, as they should, that uh, you know, you've got to restore service, you've got to restore velocity, and, and that's what we owe our customers. And I think our challenge now is to take the same energy we put into uh, addressing the crisis now into restoring service and velocity across our network. That's our challenge going forward, and that's what we got to focus on.